Nou, dit is apart. De bagage waar is open. Van die kist. Braaf golf Tengo. Kan dat dan? Hij komt binnen met een open. Hey all, welcome to another episode of the Gate Checked Daily Recap. If you like today's content, please feel free to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of our future videos. Also, you can check out any of today's stories mentioned in the description below. While most of the world looked on at Nancy Pelosi's flight to Taiwan, another incident happened in Amsterdam where a KLM-737 was caught on video taxiing into the ramp with its forward cargo door open. So, how would something like that happen? In an official statement, KLM said, During flight KL-1542 from Leeds to Amsterdam on 2nd August, one of the cargo hatches was partially pressed in due to a technical defect. Passengers and crew were not in any danger. There was also no risk of cargo or bags falling out. So if the lock to the cargo compartment failed between Leeds and Amsterdam, why didn't the doors open? Well, this is one of the most interesting and fun things about the 737s because unlike all of the other aircraft, the cargo doors actually open inward, unlike other aircraft where the cargo doors open outward. And one of the things is once uh, the cabin is pressurized, the doors pretty much are sealed shut. So unless there was some type of explosive decompression or the doors structurally failed, those doors simply wouldn't open. So even if the latch was unlocked, the cabin pressure keeping everyone safe and comfortable would actually keep those doors sealed tightly. So the concept of cabin pressure works something like this. Hot air is taken from the engines via the engine bleeds and then passed through a system called PAX or pressurization air conditioning kits. So in this, the air is cool, purified and brought to a very comfortable state for passengers. Now, as an aircraft needs to be pressurized, more air is taken in from the bleeds and there is actually a valve in the back of the aircraft called an outflow valve. So the higher the aircraft goes, the smaller that outflow valve becomes. Or basically, it, it, it gets to cl almost close state so that more air is being brought in with less air being brought out. So typically, in terms of feed cabin pressure is brought to something like maybe um, 7,000 to 8,000 feet on a 737 and that cabin pressure is adjusted depending on what altitude you fly at. If it weren't for cabin pressure, we would basically have problems breathing because there would not be enough oxygen in the cabin. However, we can't have sea level pressure in an aircraft at the same time because most aircraft structures simply don't have the capabilities of being able to be pressurized at sea level. That basically explains why the cargo doors did not open during flight. Now, we're not exactly sure when the doors would have opened, but we speculate it may have happened when it touched down. Basically, that outflow valve remains partially closed during flight and slowly opens up as the aircraft starts to lose altitude. So basically, what's happening is pressure is being restored to sea level as the aircraft gets lower. But because positive pressure is constantly being exerted, even to the tiniest amounts, those cargo doors most likely remain shut until the aircraft landed and uh, it's possible the vibration from landing or maybe the g-forces from breaking may have caused the door just to pop open slightly and this explains why there may have been no warning in the flight deck because with the door shut you know nobody would have been none the wiser passengers would not have felt like there was a decompression and everything would have gone all well and dandy had it been an Airbus though, where the doors open outward or maybe a Boeing 777 where you know you have bigger cargo doors that need to open outward, the situation would have been completely different. There would have been um, explosive decompression and maybe the bags might have gotten blown out but at the same time the bags are strapped down so who knows what would have happened. So call this a lucky day. In another aviation related incident, a Qatar Airways cargo Boeing 777 freighter performing a flight from Atlanta to Chicago actually ran into a lamppost while taxiing to the Northern Cargo Hub at the airport. Based on some of the initial photos, it seems that there's quite a bit of damage to the right wing as the pole went through the slats and even as far as into the wing spar. 
So I assume this is going to be a really, really expensive fix. Some people are even speculating that this may be a write-off, but I don't think so. I think that might be a bit dramatic, but it's definitely going to cost quite a bit of money to get this aircraft airworthy once again. So first of all, we're just going to have a quick listen to the taxi instructions given to the aircraft, and then we can do a little bit of analysis, and you all can determine who might be right or who might be wrong. Sorry, 67 X ray turn, left on Kilo, Bravo, Bravo, then the immediate left turn. And then I want you to go to Zulu, hold short on my 9 right. Okay, left on Kilo, then left on Bravo, Bravo, then Zulu, and hold short of 9 and right. That's what it is. Okay, heavy. We were told to go back to Kilo, but no problem. So that's fine. Bravo, 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 Bravo to Zulu, hold short 9 right. Bravo, bravo, Zulu, hold short, nine or right, that's very seven and Bravo, bravo, then bravo, bravo, two. Bravo, 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 two. That's very six, seven. So one might be wondering, was there some type of miscommunication? Maybe the aircraft got it wrong, maybe they took the wrong taxiway. And normally, O'Hare has a tendency to have cases where aircraft miss turns because the, air the airport is undeniably quite complicated. There are a lot of taxiways, very similar um, taxiway names. But in this case, even though the, air, the Qatar aircraft may have confused the instructions, they eventually got it right and they followed the line they were given. So the final instructions were Kilo, Bravo, 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 Bravo 2, Zulu, and then whole short 9 right. And interestingly enough, O'Hare Tower had initially given them Kilo, Bravo, Bravo, then Zulu, and whole short 9 right. Now here's where it gets interesting. Um, the aircraft would have been taxiing via Bravo Bravo 2 when it came into contact with the light pole. Now here's where things get a bit fun. On the ground charts, there is actually a note in the operations note section saying, taxi line Bravo Bravo 2 is close to aircraft with a wingspan greater than 118 feet or 36 meters. Now the 777, has a wingspan of 213 feet or 65 meters and obviously that's well bigger than what the chart recommends so in reality an aircraft of that size should not be taxiing along bravo bravo 2 and if you look at previous flights that uh the same flight um taxiing um from runway 10 center they actually taxied all the way from kilo onto bravo bravo and continued straight up to golf instead and then continue to the ramp because obviously uh, the Bravo Bravo taxiway is capable of handling an aircraft of that size. Um, so it's interesting to see how ATC made this mistake because they would have obviously known that Bravo Bravo 2 is close to an aircraft of this size. However, this isn't good news to the pilots either because they don't really get off scot free because they should have known that, you know what, our aircraft can't taxi via Bravo Bravo 2. And that's what the operation notes are for. So I don't know what's going to happen to this investigation. And this is obviously just uh, speculation from an outsider's point of view. But I think in this case, both the pilot and ETC were in the wrong. I'm not sure at the end of the day what's going to happen. Who's going to take more responsibility here? But I definitely think that, you know what? Operations kind of messed this up. And pilots at the end of the day could have still been a little more aware and read a chart to see, all right, you know what, we can't taxi here. And it would be interesting to see what type of charts they would have had on the aircraft if there would have been any special markings telling them where they can and cannot taxi because heavier aircraft like the A380s and the 747-8s, they actually have special charts indicating which taxiways are approved for taxi or not. So. Only a matter of time when the investigation comes out, we'll find out what happens. In the meantime, you tell us. Tell me in the comments where you think may have gone wrong, where you think has to take responsibility, and what the outcome might be.